Can everyone can everyone hear me okay? I might turn the volume up a little bit. What about way in the back there? So so okay. Very good. Well, uh, I just want to start by welcoming everyone to the Charles L. Whitney Education Center. This is a exciting day. Very fun to be able to utter those words to a, a group of people. Uh, my name is Mitchell Lyon. I'm the executive director here at Prairie Plains. And uh, I've just been so, so thankful to have the opportunity to play a very small role in this project that uh, Bill and Jan, as, as all of you know, have, you know, have dreamed about, have, have poured their hearts and souls into. And not only them, obviously, the, the staff and the volunteers here at Prairie Plains um, so, I mean, first of all, just a round of applause for all of them. They've been fantastic. But I think, uh, you know, more so maybe the, the real hero is all of you for your generosity, uh, uh, support, love as well to, to pour into this facility. We couldn't, obviously could not have built this without all of that support. So a round of applause for everybody that have poured into this project. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We are excited to celebrate with you all today. Um, I, that's all I'm going to say. We're going to get Bill up here for some remarks, and, and we will go from there. Thank you. And I want to uh, thank Mitchell for doing what he did to finish this building and, and bringing this forward. So thanks a lot, Mitchell. Hold it closer, Bill. Is it on? Thank you a lot, Mitchell, for for bringing this project to an end and and the event today. You picked good weather as well, so we're all thankful for that. Uh, I've got a prepared message I written down to keep me on script here. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, 15 years of work on a project. There's a lot of things that that have gone into it and uh, so I'll just uh, forgive me for if I look like I'm kind of reading but I'm kind of reading. <laughs> Welcome everyone and thank you so much for coming. We're, we've been looking forward to this for such a long time and it truly has been a marathon but it does feel good to be here. If I were to make mention of every person we'd be here all day, the people that made this possible uh, but I would like to say a few things about a few key people. One was my father, for whom the center is named. He was an attorney, and a good one. He did all of Prairie Plains Resource Institute's legal work, and he did it for free in order to establish uh, Prairie Plains as a 501c3 charitable organization. He did all the land transactions, except one, his greatest advice was to always strictly adhere to public purposes of the organization as stated in the original Charter of Incorporation. Adherence to public purposes would, literal, would thereby build a history of program and accomplishment and work which would illustrate that principle in practice. It was uh, advice which served the day-to-day -day development of the administrative capacity, uh, accountability to donors, as well as the visionary aspects of planning and creating restoration projects and educational programs. So that was a big deal to me. Dad was most comfortable outside, so he did have an affinity for the land, especially if there was fishing involved. I might add. He always caught the biggest fish. And he was very supportive of the educational mission of the Institute. Admittedly, he had some reservations about, in the beginning, about just what I was doing and how was that going to make us a living. Uh, he may have wanted to ask Jan if she thought it was a good idea, like saying, do you think this is a good idea? <laughs> Jan just told me this morning it was her idea. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, Dad had a kind of expression, sort of a grimace cringe. Many of you may know that expression. 
uh, when he uh, heard something with which he had doubts about. And he certainly would have had that had he heard later that this would be named after him. Uh, here to celebrate our father with this dedication are my siblings. I'm happy they're here. Anne, Mary, and Chuck. Where's Chuck? Where is he? There. Not there. Okay. Um, and uh, it, is, it would be impossible to leave our mother out of this, as she would have been very proud and happy of her dad, and it is obvious that she had considerable influence on our lives. So I'm pleased to say that, uh, and thank Anne for her dedication to one of the classrooms for Emily Rothman Whitney. Another person who could not be here today, he's with his family in Oregon, architect Lee Shriver. I really wish he would have been able to be here, but it just wasn't possible. I met Lee in the mid-1980s at the wooded Platte Bluffs land and home of Lou and Jerry Gilbert. Some of you may know the Gilbert family. Just north of Cedar Bluffs near Fremont on the south side of the river. He was building a meeting house at the historic Paha Hill, and I was impressed that he was both a designer and a builder. In other words, he guided his projects from conception to finished work. Very skilled and had learned much about building and materials during his years growing up on a farm in near Superior, Nebraska, in Knuckles County. And uh, he also had gone to UNL and been in the Peace Corps in India. So he was very well rounded in uh, how people used buildings and the design process and how they built things. Lee mostly did custom homes. Uh, he'd done two barn conversion projects, which was appealing because we were already thinking about barns at that time. Um, he saw the Sands Barn four miles from here. Um, Mildred Sands had a, bar a huge barn that a couple of us had driven by, and um, we got interested in that, and uh, Mildred decided to donate the barn, and Jan has written a write-up about that in, in the handout. Uh, but Neil, or, uh, Lee was impressed by the barn's size, uh, and just the, the volume, the sheer volume of space inside the roof. But it rep represented a challenge. He wanted to keep the center a barn because of the cultural memory of people being in barns and a piece of, of vernacular architecture, which is essentially ordinary, domestic, and functional. So it fit in the agricultural landscape. And uh, his design was based on the concept of a pavilion, and the barn roof became was essentially a canopy or pavilion canopy where people could congregate. The roof and support structures holding it up became the design template for what you see here today, into which the different needs of classrooms, labs, etc., were fit. And the people that made that program were were uh, board members and some volunteers and staff of Prairie Plains back in the mid 2000s. Um, so that's where the program and the design process started. Um, Lee took the job and guided the process from beginning to end. He wasn't a builder uh, for all but the, uh, he helped on the initial stage of the foundation, but pretty much uh, he got out of the building process, but he oversaw everything. He was not phased by the longevity of the project. In fact, uh, he didn't seem to be surprised by it anyhow. <laughs> uh, so he's a fine example of practicality, vision, and process thinking. A real designer and building in my opinion. And I hope we met his ultimate expectations for the building. We think that he deserves much praise and appreciation for the final project. An architectural footnote is that 
Neil um, and Rats and Eisen Ratzliff, who donated Ratzliff Prairie to the institute, their son did a master's degree project on the conceptual design of the center, and also was instrumental in identifying this particular spot as the site. So Mark Ratzliff had a play in that while he was a student. While he was a student. Um, sorry for not holding it up. But anyhow, then we must mention Mitzi Fox and Kurt Tweed. Both were dear friends and supporters of Prairie Plains. Both were very generous and instrumental in accomplishing key, large, in, like engineered projects, uh, the construction elements here. Mitzi's steadfast volunteerism at Olson Nature Preserve and on the board is honored here as well as as we dedicate the great room, which is the big rafter room of the barn, in her honor. Kurt, a co-founder and board member, really got the first leg of construction started. Then uh, a later gift contributed significantly to the upstairs build out of the dormers, the lifting of the roofs and the, and the roof. We thought the porch and patio would be his favorite place to be, and that was dedicated to him. Their dedications, other than these, which I will not mention here, signs are on the doors that you can and see those. And uh, Jen, as I alluded to, prepared a, the handout, which I hope you have. You can take home and read. Uh, it tells a few more of the anecdotes of the building. Uh, so there are maybe a few things to, to do yet, like the donor wall and some miscellaneous small projects. Um, furniture being one, that's not a small one. Uh, audio visual, kitchen things, all sorts of things yet. But um, those will come. A few notes about the design. The original barn stood on a ceramic block foundation. We only moved the roof. Uh, but it was, it was a design where hay was piled in the middle of the barn, which would be what is the lower level here all the way to the top of the peak, 30 to 40 feet, and I don't know the exact number. But when you walked into the original barn and looked up, man, this is awesome. It was an incredible space. Uh, the hay mill was U-shaped, so when you walk in and out and through these classrooms, you're actually walking where the hay mill was. But there was no middle floor like the great room has now. So if you were on the hay mile, you'd look down about eight feet to the floor. Um, the double columns that, you, that are close together downstairs, those were the stanchion columns where there'd be feed bunks. The animals were around the outside. The hay was up the middle. And somebody told me that was a Scandinavian barn design to hold heat into the middle of the barn where the hay was. So the, the livestock were, were very comfortable. Uh, now our name for the lower level space is the gathering room. So it's, it's kind of similar concept. Uh, the roof is insulated above the rafters. So if you look up to the rafters and wonder where the insulation is, it's why there's a build out roof up the top. Uh, it's a geothermal heating and air conditioning system a very long coil under the road that was buried seven feet deep. So all of our heat is generated, or the energy for heating and cooling deals with circulating water into the earth and back is a closed loop of water. And it's very nice because we have very well insulated building. The breakout places inside and out for classes, performances, lectures, meals, and other gatherings depending, depend on the wind, rain, sun, snow, and temperature. If it's windy on coming from the north and sunny on the south, you can probably sit outside on the patio. So in the summer, of course, you have tons of flexibility because you can get out a lot. In the marginal seasons, you can maybe still get out. Uh, the deck here is great for shade on those sunny days. Um, 
So there's a lot of breakout space, lab space, just whatever the activity is. And don't forget the, the firing space. That was kind of a, one of those discoveries, how nice that top of the hill is. The place is durable while functional, but even though the formal interior walls are very old, the recycled barnwood does not, uh, they should not be treated, excuse me. <laughs> The, the walls are old recycled barn wood, but that does not mean that they should not be treated as fine woods, because we believe they are fine woods. The fire exit also will serve as a gallery space. So, and I do want to thank all the good contractors we had. So anyhow, that brings us to the, if I can shuffle the pages, what's most important now? We've never considered, we've never considered the center as an end goal in the Prairie Plains mission. Rather, it serves as a facilitation tool for our mission of preserving, restoring, and educating all ages about the ecosystems of the Great Plains, especially our part of it in Nebraska. This is about the local land and the, that the center sits on, the Platte River Bluffs of Gerloff and Sherman Prairie, but it's not limited here. What, within relatively short distance from the center, we can access many types of prairie and wetland areas. A diverse group of small and large rivers, and the vast agricultural and human ecosystem into which these natural ecosystems fit. All of these components of our Great Plains landscape intersect with critically important and global issues of our time concerning water, biodiversity, land stewardship, community health and development, agriculture, ecological restoration, and forthcoming efforts to adopt, adapt to serious climate stressors. All of these points indicate that we collectively need, that is absolutely necessary, to emphatically embrace a more expansive vision regarding education about this landscape. In my own upbringing, I was largely unaware of my home area. Few saw anything particularly special about it. There were few people who could answer my questions. In the future, we need more who notice what's going on in a native prairie, a wetland, or a farm. More who understand what they notice, and more who teach what they know. More who passionately love the land and the people. Our cultural vision needs a frame, needs to frame a bit much bigger picture of our region in its full grandeur and complexity, as well as seeing many of the smaller details. The big picture includes nature, people, vital small towns, businesses, and agriculture. The smaller details will come into focus through the unfolding educational process. So this is the future role of the center, to develop a process begun by Prairie Plains and others over the past few decades here in Nebraska, we were not alone, which will greatly expand people's, and especially the youth's, awareness and understanding of this amazing, amazing underappreciated region. A simple motto was coined a few years back for the center. It is fitting. Come learn and go teach. As an organization, Prey Plains focuses mostly on the myth many values surrounding native grasslands, including the wetlands and streams. That's what we really mean by the prairie, kind of the big encompassing view of prairie here. Uh, because prairie is beautiful, diverse, dynamic, in a process of continual change, and sustainable. Today, it still occupies about half of Nebraska's geographic landscape. Um, and it performs enormous functional purposes for people, such as cleaning water and groundwater, 
quantity and quality. It has created the rich farmland soils which too often we see eroding into the Gulf. The prairie is a perfect educational environment, therefore, for teaching land science, ecological restoration and stewardship, ag principles, arts, and history. Not to mention such education is hands-on and can be really interesting and fun. In a recent conversation between Colleen Babcock and Jan, Colleen remarked that the center was like a portal to the prairie experience. I think that describes it pretty well. Enjoy this place today and return frequently. In one way or another, you all help build it. So let's all keep building and gathering here to make this barn live up to its vast potential. Just a couple of announcements to kick you back out and explore things. We'll have another hike here starting in five or so minutes, I think. So if you didn't get to go do a little hike, you could jump jump in on that one and, and it's just like about a half an hour hike. Um, if you need any help or have any questions about the future or uh, what um, ideas to expand on or, or any, anything about what we're, what we're looking at or, or working on, if you find anyone with a red shirt like this, um, it's some board members and staff, so you can feel free to come ask any of us. Um, there are There's a food truck back here, so if you'd like to stay for some lunch, you can go to the food truck and get, get a lunch. There's some shaded seating down below the deck. You could grab a chair, come up on the deck if you'd like. Um, we might move some more chairs up here in the shade. And then there's some cookies and some lemonade and tea and coffee to have after lunch. So. I uh, hope you enjoy the time here. Feel free to explore, and um, thank you again for coming today. <laughs>